Hi, fourth graders, and welcome back to school. I hope you had a wonderful summer. We're going to start the school year by reading part of a story that I think you're going to like. It's called Because of Wind Dixie, and it's by Kate DiCamillo. The genre or type of story is realistic fiction. Realistic fiction has characters and events that are like people and events in real life. As you read, look for a setting that could be a real place, a plot with a beginning, a middle, and an ending, and characters who have feelings that real people have. Before we get started, let's meet the author, Kate DiCamillo. Kate DiCamillo grew up in Florida, where this story takes place. She wrote Because of Win Dixie during the first time in her life that she did not own a dog. DiCamillo believes that looking closely at the world and paying attention are the most important ways to become a good writer. As we read, let's think about our essential question. How do friends help each other? Let's begin. Ten-year-old Opal is a newcomer in the town of Naomi, Florida. She hasn't made any friends yet and feels a little lonely. Opal's only pal is a very big dog, named after the grocery store where she found him, Win Dixie. I spent a lot of time that summer at the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library sounds like it would be a big fancy place, but it's not. It's just a little old house full of books, and Miss Franny Block is in charge of them all. She is a very small, very old woman with short gray hair, and she was the first friend I made in Naomi. It all started with Win Dixie not liking it when I went into the library because he couldn't go inside too. But I showed him how he could stand up on his hind legs and look in the window and see me in there selecting my books. And he was okay as long as he could see me. But the thing was, the first time Miss Franny Block saw Win Dixie standing up on his hind legs like that, looking in the window, she didn't think he was a dog. She thought he was a bear. This is what happened. I was picking out my books and kind of humming to myself, and all of a sudden, there was this loud and scary scream. I went running up to the front of the library, and there was Miss Franny Block sitting on the floor behind her desk. Miss Franny, I said, are you all right? A bear, she said. A bear, I asked. He has come back, she said. He has, I asked. Where is he? Out there, she said and raised a finger and pointed at Win Dixie, standing up on his hind legs, looking in the window for me. Miss Franny Block, I said, that's not a bear. That's a dog. That's my dog, Win Dixie. Are you positive? She asked. Yes, ma'am, I told her. I'm positive. He's my dog. I would know him anywhere. Miss Franny sat there, trembling and shaking. Come on, I said. Let me help you up. It's okay. I stuck out my hand and Miss Franny took hold of it and I pulled her up off the floor. She didn't weigh hardly anything at all. Once she was standing on her feet, she started acting all embarrassed, saying how I must think she was a silly old lady, mistaking a dog for a bear but that she had a bad experience with a bear coming into the Herman W. Block Memorial Library a long time ago, and she had never had quite gotten over it. When did that happen? I asked her. Well, said Miss Franny, it is a very long story. That's okay, I told her. I am like my mama in that I like to be told stories. But before you start telling it, can Win Dixie come in and listen too? He gets lonely without me. Well, I don't know, said Miss Franny. Dogs are not allowed in the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. He'll be good, I told her. He's a dog who goes to church. And before she could say yes or no, I went outside and got Win Dixie 
and he came in and lay down with a <coughs> and a sigh right at Miss Franny's feet. She looked down at him and said, he most certainly is a large dog. Yes, ma'am, I told her. He has a large heart, too. Well, Miss Franny said. She bent over and gave Win Dixie a pat on the head, and Win Dixie wagged his tail back and forth and snuffled his nose on her little old lady feet. Let me get a chair and sit down so I can tell this story properly. Back when Florida was wild, when it consisted of nothing but palmetto trees and mosquitoes so big they could fly away with you, Miss Franny Block started in. And I was just a little girl, no bigger than you. My father, Herman W. Block, told me that I could have anything I wanted for my birthday. Anything at all. Miss Franny looked around the library. She leaned in close to me. I don't want to appear prideful, she said, but my daddy was a very rich man. A very rich man. She nodded and then leaned back and said, and I was a little girl who loved to read. So I told him, I said, Daddy, I would most certainly love to have a library for my birthday. A small little library would be wonderful. You asked for a whole library? A small one, Miss Franny nodded. I wanted a little house full of nothing but books, and I wanted to share them too. And I got my wish. My father built me this house, the very one we are sitting in now. And at a very young age, I became a librarian. Yes, ma'am. What about the bear? I said. Did I mention that Florida was wild in those days? Miss Franny Block said. Uh-huh, you did. It was wild. There were wild men and wild women and wild animals. Like bears. Yes, ma'am. That's right. Now, I have to tell you, I was a little Miss Know-It-All. I was a Miss Smarty Pants with my library full of books. Oh, yes, ma'am. I thought I knew the answers to everything. Well, one hot Thursday, I was sitting in my library with all the doors and windows open and my nose stuck in a book when a shadow crossed the desk. And without looking up, yes ma'am, without even looking up, I said, is there a book I can help you find? Well, there was no answer. And I thought it might have been a wild man or a wild woman, scared of all these books and afraid to speak up. But then, I became aware of a very peculiar smell, a very strong smell. I raised my eyes slowly, and standing right in front of me was a bear. Yes, ma'am, a very large bear. How big? I asked. Oh, well, said Miss Franny, perhaps three times the size of your dog. Then what happened? I asked her. Well, said Miss Franny, I looked at him and he looked at me. He put his big nose up in the air and sniffed and sniffed as if he was trying to decide if a little Miss Know-It-All librarian was what he was in the mood to eat. And I sat there and then I thought, well, if this bear intends to eat me, I am not going to let it happen without a fight. No, ma'am. So very slowly and very carefully, I raised up the book I was reading. What book was that? I asked. Why, it was War and Peace, a very large book. I raised it up slowly and then I aimed it carefully and I threw it right at that bear and screamed, Be gone! And do you know what? No, ma'am, I said. He went, but this 
is what I will never forget. He took the book with him. Nuh-uh, I said. Yes, ma'am, said Miss Franny. He snatched it up and ran. Did he come back? I asked. No, I never saw him again. Well, the men in town used to tease me about it. They used to say, Miss Franny, we saw that bear of yours out in the woods today. He was reading that book and he said it sure was good. And would it be all right if he kept it for just another week? Yes, ma'am. They did tease me about it. <sighs> she sighed. I imagine I'm the only one left from those days. I imagine I'm the only one that even recalls that bear. All my friends, everyone I knew when I was young, they are all dead and gone. <sighs> she sighed again. She looked sad and old and wrinkled. It was the same way I felt sometimes, being friendless in a new town and not having a mama to comfort me. I sighed too. <sighs> when Dixie raised his head off his paws and looked back and forth between me and Miss Franny. He sat up then and showed Miss Franny his teeth. Well, now look at that, she said. That dog is smiling at me. It's a talent of his, I told her. It is a fine talent, Miss Franny said. A very fine talent. And she smiled back at Win dixie We could be friends, I said to Miss Franny. I mean you and me and Win dixie We could all be friends. Miss Franny smiled even bigger. Why, that would be grand, she said just grand. And right at that minute, right when the three of us had decided to be friends, who should come marching into the Herman W. Block Memorial Library but old pinch-faced Amanda Wilkinson. She walked right up to Miss Franny's desk and said, I finished Johnny Tremaine and I enjoyed it very much. I would like something even more difficult to read now because I am an advanced reader. Yes, dear, I know, said Miss Franny. She got up out of her chair. Amanda pretended like I wasn't there. She stared right past me. Are dogs allowed in the library? She asked Miss Franny as they walked away. Certain ones, said Miss Franny. A select few. And then, she turned around and winked at me. I smiled back. I had just made my first friend in Naomi, and nobody was going to mess that up for me. Not even old pinch-faced Amanda Wilkinson. Okay, fourth graders, I hope you enjoyed this part of the story because of Win dixie If you're interested in reading the entire story, your teacher probably has a copy or you can go to your school or local library. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you soon. Bye.